Welcome to Texas Roadhouse. Yes, the place where you go to get the best feed in the world. Absolutely top of the line, high echelons. Um, you get the best food you can get. Really? Are you kidding yourself, Barry? Um, well, anyway, this stock has been an absolute brilliant stock in the past but it's been a bit iffy in 2023 will this stock start to skyrocket again is there a value opportunity right here right now for texas roadhouse well in this video we're going to do a stock analysis on texas roadhouse we're going to look at revenue net profit long-term debt versus the free cash flow return on invested capital assets versus total liabilities and everything else in between give you an opportunity to understand the stock at a finance level and if you stay right to the end of the video you'll get the possible intrinsic value of this company and a possible chance to buy in i'm very very big on getting a margin of safety gives you that opportunity to save but it depends on the stock if it's a growth stock then maybe you have to take that higher premium but a stock like a value play like texas roadhouse could be you have to wait for the right time. If you buy in at the all-time highs, you can be absolutely struggling to make money within a 10-year period if you get it at all-time highs. You need to get it when it's down. Don't have to be right at the bottom, but just got to be down nicely. Let's get to it right here, right now, on Barry Charles. Texas Roadhouse. Let's have a look at the revenue in expected in 2023 of around $4.5 billion up from $4 billion in 2022, and they just continue to continue to nicely tick over their revenue at a decent pace. And net profit as well, it's probably a bit low for my liking, but I suppose it's one of these businesses, $290 million, but that is been slowly improving as well. Earnings per share with this company is 4.6, with a P-E ratio of just above 20, so that's pretty good to see. Um, Short interest on this company was a little bit higher than I was expecting at 4%. So some people were thinking the stock could get crash and burn. If we're looking at all-time highs, 85 to 118, depending on what's happening with the stock and what have risen from the time of recording, but uh, it's around mid-range at the moment. Um, so was, if you got it at 85, congratulations, because it's probably a decent time to have got in. Uh, market cap, 6.4 billion. Um, Yes, it's gonna it's gonna be an interesting one with this company where the where the future holds on this company if it can really continue to grow, grow, grow. Um dividends, you got two dollars um twenty um is the dividend at two point two nine percent. Um we look at total assets of this company of two point five billion, which has slightly just been flat the last couple of years, so that's not been that impressive. If you're looking for a negative on this company, total liabilities of one virtually one point five billion up 3x pretty much from um 20 uh, from five years ago so that's a bit of a concern but it's on the major free cash flow has been a little bit of a yo-yo was 122 million last quarter now it's down to 11 million was that an acquisition that's what you have to understand long-term debt well there's no long-term debt beautiful there you go this stock is a bang 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 there's quite a few positives on the stock here um since 2020 they obviously had to do some and some pay some debt in 2020 with um, probably having to pay their employees because of the lockdown. So that was probably a big reason for that and just to stay afloat. But they paid that off. So that's very, very good. Shares outstanding on this company is 66.7 million. And they've been nicely just paying you a bit more money with shares outstanding over the last few years. So that is very, very positive for this company. But Texas Radius, what... Do they need to do to go to their next level? Um, because everything's looking fairly good with this company. Um, yes, um, they free cash flow. If they can just try and get that more and more and more assertive up um, at something. If they can push their net profit level up from the revenue, I think that's something they need to work on. Get their bottom line a bit higher up. I think that's, that's one of the big things. You're getting a, a decent enough dividend at the moment. Um, but the positives, obviously, long-term debt. But yeah, it's about scalability with Texas Roadhouse. Can they scale? If you if you want the stock to go to the moon, this this company need to scale in US, in Canada, and all over the world. If they really want to take this company to the next level, 
that's where they've got to find the best thing out there. They've got to find a way to scale, make their money, make it more profitable for the company. That's where Texas Roadhouse is heading. That's where they need to head if they want to be a, a stock that's going to get more and more opportunity for the investors out there. Well, this is what you've been here for, waiting around for, the intrinsic value of Texas Roadhouse. Where are we at right now? Where could it possibly be? I'm going to be conservative with my opinion on it, but this doesn't mean the prices right now is not a bad. So with Texas Roadhouse here, I'm doing Graham's calculator, which looks at the share price, earnings per share, the growth rate, the bond yield, and we finish with the intrinsic value, which gives you the intrinsic value. This is a simple calculator. Now what I do is I minus off the dividends a bit as well, and that gives you an idea of roughly where the stock is at, and then I look at a possible point where you can buy the stock. So the share price for me, I'm, I'm just being back, it could be it could have dropped quite a bit or could be up from time of recording, but I'm just trying to give a bit of a halfway point here. So I'm going to take the stock at $100 at the moment, at an earnings per share of 4.6, at a growth rate of 5%. The intrinsic value of the company is 88.7, so it's a bit overvalued at the moment. But if we creep that up to 10% growth rate, which clearly they're doing at the moment in the revenue side, the stock is 136. So very much an investable stock if you're looking at those sort of metrics at the moment. If we add the earnings per share, it rises up to 6, so at the same 10% growth rate, we're looking at 178 a share. So this, this stock is looking like a good chance to be a value play. And then if the earnings per share really jumped up to $8 and we just bump it up to 15% growth rate, the stock is $321 all day of the week. If you believe in that positive mindset, the future is going to be great. And they're going to grow at 15% each year and it will rise their earnings per share. Um, this is an interesting stock because I can see it going to 300 I can see it going even higher than that and it can do the dominoes, all that sort of scalability option, options for this company, McDonald's style that is where the road ahead is if they want to be playing up with those sort of companies if they want to get that bigger scale that's where they need to look at because of the market cap of above six billion that's where they need to go if they want to grow and grow and grow um so it's a possible value play but where would i want to be at the stock right now well there's two i've got two intrinsic values for you today if i'm going on right now what everything's happening at the moment I'm going to say the stock is about $100 would be my intrinsic value right here, right now. If you were going on a safety side of things, which for me would mean the stock will need to get to $50. Is that going to happen? Highly unlikely, but there's a recession. If a recession comes, it could drop. But I don't know if it'll get to 50 but if it did, if it did well, that'd be hallelujah. That's a possibility. I'd load the boat. But there's also the possibility the stock could go to that $300 mark. So if, if you think that stock's going to go to the $300, $250 mark, um, you buy the stock all day right here, right now. But that's for you to do the more research and understand the company more. If you think that scalability is there for this company, or has it already scaled already so high that it won't be able to continue, you got to see what, um, you also got to look at the CEOs and all that. When you do investing, you got to check into that, the annual reports, you got to do all that stuff before you invest into anything. Um, well, you can just invest blindly and get a bit of blind luck, but if you continue to do that, more than likely you'll lose over the long term. So if you don't want to lose over the long term, do your research, make sure you do everything. Texas Roadhouse is a potential buy right here, right now, um, just depending on what you see the metrics of the company is. But remember, try and get that margin of safety. That's what I try to preach on this channel, get that margin of safety so you get that chance to say. But this is not financial advice. Do your own research before you invest into any company. Invest at your own risk. But thank you so much. This is just a little bit of a taste of what Texas Roadhouse um, stock metrics are and giving you the idea of a possible intrinsic value on this company for you to do more research to understand the stock more and hopefully potentially make yourself some money on the way. Not financial advice, but thank you so much for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel and have an awesome day out there.